Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. I wanted to address international shipping a little bit. It was brought up on yesterday's live show with Dom, and um, I got a ton of emails and comments and questions and things on international shipping specifically. Before we go any further, the biggest question is, is this safe in shipping? Is it safe to ship international? I'm going to tell you right now, every single package you send out is a risk. Every single one, no matter where you're sending it, what country, even if it's in this country, you can get taken on any package you send out. Everyone. I don't care what it is. Even if it's all clear, it arrives, the person leaves good feedback, two months down the road, they could claim that as a chargeback on their charge card and get their money back in most cases. Obviously, not every time it's going to work, but these are options. These are things that could happen to you at any point for any item you send, whether it's international, local, to somewhere even in your own town. Either way, it's the same risk in all honesty. Now, we've been selling international packages for 20 plus years. Since we've been on eBay, we've done international shipping in most of the areas. Records especially, no matter what you do, you're going to sell a lot of the high dollar ones overseas to England, Germany, and countries along that line. France as well, sometimes Japan. So you've got to know the rules. Now, there are several people that had some issues where eBay cited and actually let the person keep it and they gave them their money back. Well, I shouldn't say let them keep it, but in some cases, the cost to return an item from overseas could cost you two, three times what it costs to actually send it to them, just because their services may not be as cheap. Now, there's many options. We use uh, UPS. We've got Airborne. We've got all the major shipping companies' accounts with every one of them. We even have an account with an English uh, shipper as well, because we do ship a lot to England. We ship some to Japan, so we've got access to other places. Now, we've done this for, as I said, more than 20 years, so we've made a lot of contacts and learned through mistakes. We've made mistakes shipping international you know, 10, 20 years ago. So we've looked into all the aspects of it before we ever even started to go into the programs and, and such forth. There's good and bads about no matter what you ship. But again, I'm going to say this one more time. No matter where you're shipping to, you could end up being out the item and the actual payment for the item as well, too. That's just a fact no matter where you ship it to. There's a ton of ways to get scammed. Now, for us with shipping, I ship directly to certain countries straight to them through first class international mail. First class international mail through the U.S. government goes up to four pounds. That is our cutoff point. Anything over four pounds goes through the global shipping program. It's just the way we've done it with no returns through us. Now, I, I know we're covered with the global shipping program. If the box gets lost, ours all go to Kentucky. Every package goes to Kentucky. So I don't know what everybody else's case is. I don't know how many facilities they have, but ours goes to a central location. From there, as soon as it's clocked in and shows it's moving again, I'm free from loss of the package, damage of the item, um, or get crushed or anything like that. It gets stuck in customs or whatever happens to it. If it's not delivered, I am covered. Now, the person, of course, at the other end could say it's not as described. eBay does not cover you at all for not as described. And that's the same way it is in the U.S. So if something's not as described, even if it's a 100-pound uh, block of stone that you sent from one air from east coast to say west coast for 150 bucks you're still going to have to pay to have that sent back or you're going to have to let them keep it same goes with overseas if they state it's not as described now it may have been as described and they just may be trying to pull a fast one there isn't much you can do the biggest complaint i got from yesterday's conversation on this was that i'm siding with ebay and and just justifying the issue the problem with trying to take a side, no matter who you're with, is that you can't prove either way. You have to have enough proof. If, let's say this is a $1,000 item we're talking about that you had to shell out or let the person keep. First off, you probably didn't pay 1000 bucks for it, so you're only out the amount that you actually paid for the item. Yes, you could have sold it possibly if it was returned and made at least some more profit out of it, but you're only really out the cost of the item and the original shipping if something goes haywire. So let's say I sell a $100 item. I paid $2 for it. It gets lost. I'm only out $2 in the original shipping, $3, whatever it is. So I'm not going to sweat it over something like that, depending on what I have into it. The, the bottom line is there's nothing you can do to totally protect yourself no matter what you're doing. 
Now, let's say you sold a two or $3,000 stereo to someone in California, and you're on the East Coast in, say, Boston. It already costs you close to $100, probably, or more, to send it to California. Now, they could say there's an issue with it. They could actually, you know, return it, the whole works, and send you bricks back that weigh the same amount in a, the same box. You'll get it. You're going to call eBay, and eBay's not going to know who's telling the truth. And the, the, another complaint is, well, you know, eBay's known you for a long time, and they know that you just wouldn't do that. Well, eBay doesn't know that because half the time the, the con men that have been trying to scam on us in the past and other issues are people who had like a thousand or more feedback. There's more issues that I've ever had with people who are just starting on eBay than those who have been in for a long time, in all honesty. Again, everybody has a different experience, so um, I don't need any hate mail saying that, you know, that's not how it is. That's my experience. I don't know what everybody else has with it. This is honestly how I, I see it, so... You know, the risks are the same whether you're shipping an expensive item here in the U.S. or you're shipping something overseas that costs you a lot to ship. I have ways to ship almost anything I ship back from any of the countries that I directly ship to. Now, global shipping programs are a different story. So let's do a hypothetical. Let's say I'm doing $10,000 through the global shipping program a year. I have one bad deal that... I sold an item for $500 and the guy's claiming, you know, there's issues with it. I don't ship heavy items, but let's just say it's a heavy item. And let's say it's not practical to send it back. So I'm going to be out that $500 item. I only paid, say, 50 bucks for it. So I'm really only out 50 bucks. Now, I'm not going to give up doing the global shipping program because I sold $10,000 overall in there. All that does is lower my actual income from the global shipping program, a tiny minute amount when you look at it from the big picture. Don't look at it from the little picture of losing, you know, 300, 4, 5, whatever the total is, versus how much you actually sell through the global shipping program. Now, if that's the only item you've ever sold and you've been on the global shipping program for five years, you know, it doesn't justify being in the program in all honesty. You know, you got to weigh your, your options. For us, we sell a ton in global shipping and enough to rate top uh, rated plus uh, status in every country on the globe that eBay, uh, US eBay does, uh, deals with. So, you know, I, it's a big thing for me. I'm not going to give it up for a deal that went astray. The only honest issue I've had with the global shipping program is a 78 record was damaged. The person sent me a picture. Um, I reported to eBay because he opened a case that it wasn't as described because it had a crack in it. Now, you can see in my picture that there wasn't a crack. You know, it's all nice looking. eBay covered the whole expense. I didn't even have to ask her. They didn't ask for pictures or nothing for me. I don't know what they did with the other gentleman. He couldn't leave feedback over that as well either because of how the global shipping program works. Similar to how it works when you offer free returns with 30-day return options on it. They cover, um, when somebody opens a return, eBay will cover any feedback left for anything if they opened a return on the item. Only if they opened a return as well, too. So, you know, there's many options to do this. But if you lose out on one sale or something on an overseas item, it's not the end of the world. And I would never cut off doing the service if I was making money. It's just like going to Amazon. If you're on Amazon and you send something out and you've already been billed for the shipping and all, and something happens to it after or they claim some issue with it, Amazon's going to side with the buyer no matter what. Pretty much no matter what the item is, what it weighs, how much it would cost you, how much you were going to be out, many sites have that same basic philosophy. eBay can't side with anybody because they weren't there when you packed it up to send to the person. And they weren't there when it actually arrived and the person opened it up. There's no way to know. No one's watched the box from one location to the other. If you took this to a court of law and tried to sue eBay, you're not going to win because there's no proof either way. You would have to have definitive proof, you know, an actual photo of somebody doctoring the equipment that they're saying something was wrong with. It's even worse when you send stuff overseas because your package could be opened and inspected in any other country for customs-related issues. That's just the way it is. I've had many packages, including records, opened up all the time. Belgium, I've had many opened up. In one week, I had a whole bunch that were opened up. The person responded and sent notices about this. I even saw what the box looked like after they got it with a inspection sticker on it um, through a customs uh, bureau. So stuff like that's going to happen. So... 
and there's no way for them to know what happened to it. In some countries, you know, it's not uh, uh, as safe to send stuff around, and individuals do stuff with postal items all the time. So, you know, I've gotten packages from overseas that had stuff missing and that were opened and all kinds of stuff. So there's more to just saying, you know, this guy's been a seller on eBay for 10 years versus this guy's some new buyer. Everybody's new at one time. So there's no way to, to beat one of these cases. They basically have to make a, some sort of equivalency uh, decision on it. And sometimes too, eBay, if you call them on the phone and there's a major issue and you, you go down about it and you're upset about it, they will, in courtesy, actually refund you the difference so you wouldn't be out anything as well as refund the actual buyer. You know, another thing that happens too is they'll send something back and it won't be in the condition you sent it in. As well with the global shipping program, you can deduct part of your refund from that. So like even with the returns here in this country, if you offer free returns and 30 day return time frame, you could actually do the option and refund only part of their money. So you could compensate yourself for part of it too. eBay's told me to do that on several occasions when someone tried to pull a fast one, you know? You've just got to understand how all the systems work. There's never going to be a time when you, you're not at risk again. You know, any actual thing you're getting ready to mail out or sell and want to ship has that same risk of being lost. Again, 60, 90 days down the road, someone could still open that chargeback we talked about. So a chargeback are hard to actually win, especially if it's happened months ago and maybe you don't have the emails or any correspondence or anything else like that. Another thing not to do is never take any of these issues personally against you from somebody who does that to you. A person ripping you off on eBay doesn't know you at all. A person who buys from you on eBay has no clue on who you are in any way, shape, or form. Woman, man, child, anything. They have no idea on who you are. They just think they're ripping off eBay. Most people assume eBay covers all these losses. You'd be surprised. You know, we know it's not that way, you know. So if somebody does rip me off, I am out something. Yeah. I always get hate when I say this, though, but it is a cost of doing business. I worked as a regional, and, and I had to worry about being robbed from every aspect of the business. A vendor would rip us off. They'd stuff bad produce or, or bad items on the bottom of boxes, and they did this kind of stuff, believe it or not. We actually dropped vendors because of this. So you got to worry about vendors, all of them. They can short you a box of meat that costs 500 bucks. There's just so many reasons a vendor could screw you. You've got employees that are robbing from your tills or stealing merchandise or taking food home or pencils, pens. I know it may not sound like much, but when everybody does this or everybody does that, and you've got 110 employees, 200 employees, you've got five restaurants, $11 million in sales, pens even add up. You're talking thousands of dollars at the end of a year. Just pen loss can add up to when you're selling, you know, having $11 million in revenue coming into a facility. So... Those are two areas right there. You've also got customers as well that are trying to rip you off from every angle that you could imagine. That's just what happens in all of the establishments in the real world. Every department store, grocery store, convenience store, wherever anything is sold, the opportunity for theft is there. So it, it is a cost of doing business because every business on the planet has to deal with that. Uh, it's not right. It's not wrong. It's just the facts. There's nothing you can do about preventing theft in every way, shape, or form. It's impossible. Every time you figure out one way to stop something, somebody just figures out another way to rip you off. It's not an opinion in, in my book. It's it's factual. There's nothing you can do to stop every, every crime and every theft of your personal property or business property from happening. You know, and eBay has to do their best to answer it in a legal standpoint. They don't know what happened. They weren't there on either end of the situation. If you were the one who had to decide, how are you going to decide? Are you going to just decide because one person's been on the site longer than the other? If they challenge that in a court of law, there's no basis to side with somebody based on length of time. It's, it's just like telling somebody you don't trust them because they're 75 years old versus I trust the 23-year-old. It's, it's the same kind of principle anyway. There's no justification in a court of law. Now, I'm not giving you an opinion on that. That's just factual. First year in law school, you're going to basically go over that. You have to have enough evidence, preponderance of the evidence. It has to be enough physical or tied evidence that proves without a shadow of doubt that party A is guilty versus party B. There's, there's just no way eBay can do that. So I don't see them going out of their way to side. I've lost money. We've lost hundreds of dollars. 
You know, I've lost a $500 plus in one deal once before. So, you know, I didn't have that much into it. So I didn't technically lose $500. I lost 20 or 30 bucks out of my pocket in shipping. I, I never look at the sale price of the item as my loss. All I'm doing is refunding money that technically wasn't mine until everything was done with anyway. I never worry about the money until, you know, a certain length of time has went by too, because it, it could always be pulled back at some point. So overall, the global shipping program, we've been scammed far less by a huge amount than we ever have through longtime eBay sellers or people that were buying off of us. So I have more issues with U.S. buyers than I've ever had with global shipping people. And I don't have many issues at all, even in the U.S. here with what we sell. I almost never have a return of any kind. Uh, we don't do clothing and I don't do high-end electronics or any of that stuff anymore. We play it safe. If you're going to sell higher end electronics and stuff, there's always going to be a higher risk. That's the only other thing you can protect is the amount of risk you take. The higher the dollar item, the more fragile it is, the higher your risk is, and the more money you could be out if something happens. You got to weigh also how much money you have into the item. If the item you cost you $2 and you're looking to make $300, it's worth the risk because at the end of the day, you're only out a couple of dollars in shipping, and that's it if that $300 sale goes haywire. But again, I would fully recommend selling on the global shipping program. We ship directly, though, to specific countries through First Class International. If the item is actually over a certain dollar amount, we actually go down and get it registered. And that way it's actually sealed up and handled differently to the countries we deal with. We ship directly to Canada, uh, England, France, Germany, uh, Australia, and Japan. Those are the countries we ship directly to. And again, as I said earlier, I only ship up to four pounds, anything up to four pounds directly to another country. I can cover every return on those direct shipments through one of the vendors or the shipping companies we actually have dealings or accounts with right now. So those are all covered on returns, no matter what the item costs. If it's under four pounds, I can get it shipped back for very little money comparatively to anything else over four pounds. So. But that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gives you some thoughts on this. Don't give up doing something because of one bad egg or one bad deal. Don't look at the one event. Look at the big picture. In many sellers, even such as yourself, it can increase our sales by $10,000 or more a year in just opening up that option. So anyway, that's what I have for you. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.